will solve one more problem to design the pair of spur gears with 20 degree full depth involute system. Now this problem is somewhat different than the one which we solved previously. With regards that in this case the number of teeth on pinion as well as number of teeth on gear which are to be used it is already given. One difference as compared to the previous problem is that the material for uh, pinion and material for gear both are specified. So it means that first of all we will have to find out the weaker element out of pinion and gear and then only we can proceed with the design of this uh, gear pair. So first of all we will write down all the given things. As we know given things are really important because they help us to sort out the data that is given to us. So the number of teeth on pinion it is 20 number of teeth on gear ZG it is 50 then pinion shaft is connected to 22.5 kilowatt motor so kilowatt is equal to 22.5 then rpm of the electric motor or we can say the speed at which the pinion has to rotate is 1450 rpm then starting torque of the motor is 150% of rated torque which is mentioned here. So it means that we have been given service factor it is 150%. So remember when we say percent so actually we are saying per cent per 100. So it is nothing but 150 divided by 100 so cs is equal to 1.5 okay then uh, we have the material the sut for pinion as well as sut for gear it is given to us the factor of safety is fs it is equal to 1.5 okay so first of all during the solution we need to find out that which out of the pinion or gear which element is the weakest element for this we will take the understanding of beam strength into account so we know that in general the beam strength SP is given as MP into sigma B multiplied by Y M is module B is the width the face width sigma B is equal to SUT by 3 the bending strength and Y is the Lewis form factor so out of this we observe that if both uh, pinion and gear they will be having same module they will be having same face width but because we are changing the number of teeth that's why this y parameter will change and we are changing the uh, material that's why this sigma b parameter will change so we will calculate this parameter sigma b into y for pinion as well as we will calculate sigma b into y for gear so it means that sigma b which is equal to sut by 3 and y for pinion this entire entity entire quantity for pinion so for pinion we have 20 as the number of teeth so we will refer to the table of lewis form factor so in this case we observe that for 20 number of teeth the lewis form factor value is 0.320 so we will use this value it is specified against the number of teeth on that particular element so we have z and we have y so for 20 number of teeth we will select y as 0 0.320 this is for pinion so this is equal to SUT by 3 which means 410 that is for pinion so 410 divided by 3 multiplied by 0 0.320 for pinion this product when we calculate using calci it comes out to be 136.67 so that is 136.67 newton per mm square this is for pinion in the same fashion we will calculate sigma b into y so that is equal to 200 divided by 3 sut by 3 for gear number of teeth for gear just specified they are 50 so we will go to the data table again we will see where there is a figure of 50 fortunately there is a direct figure of 50 
otherwise we would have to go uh, with interpolation so for 50 we have y is equal to 0 0.408 so ultimately what we see here this is 0 0.408 so when we uh, carry out this product uh, it becomes 27.20 so in essence 27.20 newton per mm square so what is the meaning of this it means that the product sigma v into y for gear is less than the product sigma v into y for pinion so it implies that pinion is stronger and gear is actually the weaker element so it means that our further design will be totally based on the gear parameters gear is weaker element so our design will be totally dependent on gear so we will design for gear so that understanding is clear with us the next thing that we need to do we have been given the speed at which this pinion will rotate because it is coupled with the motor now we also need to find out the speed at which the gear will rotate so that we can obtain immediately as we know that np into zp is equal to ng into zg so np is 1450 zp which is already given to us is 20 so that is equal to speed of gear multiplied by 50 number of teeth on gear when we evaluate this we get speed at which the gear rotates it is equal to 580 rpm so we have ng why do we need ng because we will need to find out the module on the basis of beam strength and for that purpose we will need zg as well as ng right now we do not know anything about velocity it has not been specified in the problem statement so let us assume a pitch line velocity of 5 meter per second and like i have already said in the previous numerical as well you can also assume let us say 7 meter per second 7.5 meter per second still it is not an issue the velocity will correct itself afterwards once you have arrived at some uh, solution so let us say velocity v is equal to 5 meter per second so because of this the parameter cv the velocity factor so that becomes 3 upon 3 plus v and this is nothing but 3 upon 3 plus 5 so that is 3 by 8 now we have the equation for module just give me a second yes so we have the equation for module and this module it is based on beam strength module based on sorry module based on beam strength so this formula is already available with us so that is equal to 16 to 10 to 6 formula is actually quite simple kw csfs only that there are so many terms in it but chronologically that is very simple to be understood divided by pi into zg and g multiplied with cv into v by m this ratio will be already assumed or it will be available into sut by 3 coupled with y and this entire entity this entire entity raised to the power just a second raised to the power and by 3 or cube root of this now we will substitute all the values so let us see where do we arrive so 60 into 10 raised to 6 into kw to be transmitted 22.5 cs is available to us it is 1.5 fs is 1.5 divided by pi into zg number of uh, teeth on gear it is 50 available to us ng we just calculated it to be 580 rpm then cv is 3 by 8 this ratio we calculated actually we just kept it as it is so that calculator will do the job for us 
then b by m ratio this can be considered as 10 we have already discussed the standard phase width SUT by 3 this SUT by 3 will be for the gear remember design is based on gear so don't get confused at this point SUT will be for the gear Y will also be for the gear rather this is again one once again this entire quantity is nothing but the product Sigma B multiplied by Y it is uh, not different so Y is already also now uh, we have taken from the table 0 0.408 raised to 1 by 3 so i will suggest you calculate this properly in your calculator by yourself don't just uh, rely on the given answer so the value comes out to be about 6.85 in my cal it is coming out to be 6.89 mm some difference in the decimal place can be tolerated so this is an arbitrary value so we will go for the next preferred value of the module and that value will be equal to so m will be equal to 7 mm okay so now the module is here so because of that we can proceed for the opt uh, to obtain the dimensions of various uh, components so ultimately uh, actually module itself is one of the dimensions one of the parameters so dp the peak circle diameter of pinion so that is equal to mzp so module is 7 this is 20 so that gives you 140 mm is peak circle diameter of pinion then peak circle diameter of gear it is mzg so 7 multiplied by 50 so that gives you 350 mm this is the second diameter and then width the face width we have considered it to be 10 times module so 10 multiplied by 7 so that is equal to 70 mm so basic dimensions are specified now we can check that the assumptions that we have made about the velocity and on the basis of that we have calculated uh, here we have assumed that velocity is 5 meter per second on the basis of that we have calculated module so we just need to check whether this is correct or not so we will go ahead with this so i will suggest we call it as checking for design safety which means we will be evaluating sb and factor of safety on the basis of these parameters and we will check whether it is still within the limits checking for design safety or correctness okay so now for this purpose first of all see the understanding is very simple most of the times student uh, students tend to ask me sir how to remember so many formulae i will simply tell you one simple trick actually there is one core formula and around it there are other sub components of that formula our basic understanding is that your sp it should be greater than the p effective simple we just need to remember this if this has to be greater which means there has to be some coefficient in p effective or some additional component in p effective which will help it to get equalized with the sb so sb will be equal to p effective into fs and how uh, what exactly is p effective p effective is nothing but cspt upon cd and for cd we have a formula depending on the velocity for the spur gear 3 upon 3 plus p or 5.6 upon 5.6 plus root v 6 upon 6 plus v depending on the values of velocity so that we can immediately calculate as far as pt is concerned pt is obtained from mt as 2 mt by dp this is again very basic that this is a force and this is a moment so when we say that we want this pt actually the torque itself it has been created with the help of the force which is acting through the distance dp by 2 the pitch circle radius and that is why when we rearrange we get this formula so then pt is also obtained we can substitute that so the term is automatically solved then sometimes comes uh, the question then mt mt is obtained from the power which is to be transmitted because again the basic formula remains the same that power which is to be transmitted it is equal to 2 pi nt by 60 or 2 pi n mt upon 60 into 
10 raised to 6 if you have to convert it into kilowatt so now you see that we have focused only on this small formula and all of these formulae they came out of it we just need to remember this one entity this one understanding so i hope this will be helpful you don't need to mug up the formula you just need to understand them and you have to solve the numericals by hand you will automatically remember these things you don't need to mug it up you don't need to any rattam or activity about this so so first of all again i will go to the basic we am just focused about this parameter cspd by cv so right now i need pt for pt i need mt and mt can be obtained with the help of equation of power the quantity of power is available to me so i will just write it here for you so the power tra transmitted to be transmitted it is equal to 2 pi m mt upon 60 into 10 raised to 6 okay fine so mt is not known to us or it implies that the power which is to be transmitted it is 22.5 kilowatt it is equal to 2 pi into remember we are uh, right now uh, bothered about this mt so either we can take the uh, the power which is actually to be passed on so that ng the speed of gear we have to consider then ng it is 580 mt is not known to us the torque which is to be transmitted divided by 60 into 10 raised to 6 okay so now there is only one equation one unknown we get the value of mt so once you calculate this you can put it here it comes out to be 370446.85 newton mm all right so once this is done okay so mt is available to us and this mt will be uh, useful in order to obtain the magnitude of tangential force so immediately we can write pt is equal to 2 mt upon its circle diameter of gear so that is equal to 2 times 370446.85 divided by dg which is pcd of gear so that is 350 so on the basis of this we get the value of pt as 2116.84 newton so this is pt available to us afterwards we need to focus our attention on velocity so velocity it will be simply pi dp np upon 60 into 10 raised to 3 remember we are doing here 10 raised to 3 because this pinion diameter it is available in mm while this velocity that we need to obtain it is in meter per second so this is equal to pi dp the peak circle diameter of pinion it is 140 the speed of rotation is 1450 divided by 60 into 10 raised to 3 I will just scroll it up all right so now on the basis of this we can try that the velocity v pitch and velocity it is 10.63 meter per second so here you will observe that even though we started with velocity as 5 meter per second but now it has corrected itself so progressively we will observe that when the factor of safety we will be calculating we will come to know that if it is within permissible limits which means our assumption was correct and we are going in the right direction because in this case direction is more important than speed so on the basis of v immediately we can calculate cv so cv is because this velocity this is greater than 10 meter per second so the formula for cv in case of spur gear will change so the magnitude of cv it will be equal to 6 upon 6 plus v so that gives you 6 upon 6 plus v is 10.63 just we calculated that so it implies this is equal to 6 upon 16.63 or you can simply calculate that 0 
3608 any form is acceptable now on the basis of this we will go back to our core understanding we are interested in only this equation so we are trying to find out everything fs is already available to us but in this case now because we are in the second stage of the design we will check how much is the factor of safety because of these modified conditions or the conditions from where we started the design then we are interested in this thing p effective so out of this we have cs we have pt we have cv so now we can go for the next thing that is p effective so it implies that the effective load on gear tooth so that will be p effective which is equal to cs pt upon cv cs the service factor is available to us into pt to 116.84 divided by cv 0.3608 one second so this p effective it comes out to be double eight double zero point six one newton you might be having some different decimal places because of the round of errors in the previous steps so ultimately now we can calculate the beam strength sp which is equal to mb sigma b into y module is available to us 7 b is 70 10, 10 times module sigma b is once again 200 by 3 and capital y 0 0.408 remember once again uh, let me just remind th this product we have taken it for gear because gear is the weaker element so we have to design by taking it into account so now we come to know sp is equal to 13328 13328 newton this is the value of sp but then we have to compare this value of sp against the product p effective into fs so already we have this value of p effective we have this value of sb we can see that value of p effective is less than the value of sb so our criteria that we saw in the beginning in the understanding phase sb should be greater than p effective this is getting satisfied so that is a relief for us that yes we are going in the correct correct direction and we just we will just verify how correct we are so sb is equal to p effective into fos or factor of safety so 1328 it is equal to p effective which is double eight double zero point six one multiplied by the factor of safety so when we solve this the factor of safety it comes down to be 1.51 just verify this answer in your calculator so we have come to know that when we have arbitrarily selected the module as 7 mm in the design process and when we also considered the velocity to be 3 meter per second and we calculated the value of cv on the sorry my mistake velocity as 5 meter per second and then we calculated the value of cv we calculated the module then we needed to check whether that module and, and the dimensions corresponding to that they are correct or not so we arrive at the conclusion that even after considering that module and velocity on an arbitrary basis velocity corrected itself so the factor of safety finally coming out is 1.51 so on the basis of this we can say that it is not less than one so design is safe we can go with this design so i hope this particular numerical was useful it is different from the previous one i will suggest you also check out the previous numerical on square gear design so that you clearly understand the difference thank you and we'll see in something else some new numerical in the next video thank you